It's that time of year, my friends. It is deer season. Watch out, Bambi. We're going to split this into a few different lists because deer hunting is very different if you're in a tree stand in West Virginia compared to, you know, in Idaho shooting across canyons. So we're going to talk first about the best youth cartridges or newer shooters, somebody who's a little bit less experienced. Then we're going to get into the best western deer cartridges, the coolest ways to kill a deer, and then we're going to talk about that tree stand, ground blind, shorter range. Other thing I want to show you is today's video sponsor. These are sweet. Check this out. Honey, did you take the Kamakoto knives again? You know, the ones that are sourced from Japanese steel mills? They have that single beveled edge. It actually takes them several years to make the knives through a 19 step process. I know they're way better than our kitchen knives, but I need them for the video, hun. So these knives are seriously legit. They cut through everything like butter. Each knife is individually inspected. They come with a lifetime guarantee. They come in this nice ashwood box and they're used by Michelin star chefs all around the world. Check out Kamakoto's early Black Friday sale at kamakoto.com backfire and be sure to use coupon code backfire when you check out because that's going to give you an additional $50 off the sale price. And then you'll be slicing through everything, no problem. Peaches, apples, soda cans. Never mind, don't do the soda can. So for youth cartridges, these would be my top five picks. Do you know what they are? Can you spot them? Well, first I wanna point you to the seven millimeter 08. Basically that's the same as your 308, but it's necked down to a seven millimeter bullet instead of a 308 caliber bullet. What that means is you get pretty much that same amount of powder, but shooting a lighter weight thinner caliber bullet and it's going to work on elk or deer or anything else that you're hunting in the woods and so it's a great all-around cartridge for a new hunter. I know a lot of you recognize this one. This is the 6.5 Creedmoor. Love it or hate it, it would be difficult to argue that a 6.5 Creedmoor is a bad choice for deer. It's a perfect choice for deer. It's ubiquitous, you're gonna find every single rifle model in existence is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Ammo has been weird for everything, but 6.5 Creedmoor is definitely coming back online. You can definitely find it now. It's light in recoil, it's re relatively inexpensive, it's easy to find everywhere. That's a great choice for a new hunter or an experienced hunter. This is one that doesn't get talked about enough anymore, but used to be a lot more common. In fact, I haven't seen many, car many rifles available in this cartridge in stores for a while, which is a tragedy. This is the 243 Winchester. The recoil is so light on this thing. It's about two, two foot pounds less recoil than even the 6.5 Creedmoor. So it's a perfect choice. It's shooting a lighter bullet very, very fast. And so it's a good choice. The only thing I might say about a 243 is be sure about the bullet construction you're using because if you're using a real explosive bullet, you're shooting something that goes very fast and you shoot something close to you like from a tree stand, that can be a problem with penetration. So pick a bullet that's maybe a little bit more deep penetrating. I mean, it's a deer, but a little bit more deep penetrating just so you don't face that kind of uh, cannonball on the outside of the deer kind of situation. Then the 25 aught six. 25-06 has been one of the worst cartridges to be shooting during this whole ammo craze because that 25 caliber, there's pretty much only one thing that really shoots it. I mean, there are other 25 caliber cartridges, but not that many really. And so that 25-06 has been very difficult to find ammo and components for because the manufacturers have been going 6.5 crazy, 30 cal crazy, and so 25 cal has been harder to find. Now that things are more available, I think it's probably a good choice. And then the 6 Creedmoor. So if your knock on the 6.5 Creedmoor is that it's a little bit slow and a little bit weeny, then similar to the 308 to the 7mm 08, the 6.5 Creedmoor, we're using that same container, 
we're necking it down to a six millimeter bullet now. And so we get a little bit more speed out of it, out of a smaller bullet. That's a cool choice as well. Think of it as a modernized 243 Winchester. I knew my picks for the Western cartridge were going to be controversial no matter what I put down here, but these would be my picks for the very best Western hunting, you know, mule deer hunting in wide open territory. These would be my picks for the best cartridges. I'm looking at my notes here. Now I've selected cartridges that are flat shooting because we often have high winds, 15, 20 mile an hour winds happens all the time when you're hunting. And so I definitely care about wind drift. I also want something that can reach out to at least 400 yards because that kind of shot happens all the time when you're hunting out in the West. And when you look at all of these cartridges, you kind of say, boy, does, does it matter that much? I mean, at 200 yards, it doesn't matter. They're all the same at 200 year, yards. They're all gonna kill the deer. They're all flat shooting. There's a very little wind drift. But then you step it out to 400 yards and you see those numbers change a lot for the drop and the drift. Still, we're only talking about a difference of four inches at 400 yards, but I'll take what I can get. We're looking for the very best right here. And so you gotta point to that 6.5 PRC. I mean, it's a 6.5 Creedmoor magnemized. It's shooting 200 feet per second faster. And so the ballistics are incredibly good. It has that laser-like trajectory to get you as flat as possible. All of them are going to do the job to kill an animal at 400 yards. But if you're a purist who needs a thousand foot pounds of energy in order to kill a deer, because that's always been the old time standard, eh, then you might look at the 243 and the six Creedmoor at 400 yards and start to wonder. I don't worry about it at all because energy is not what kills. I wanna see at least 2000 feet per second of velocity. That's where we can reliably say these bullets are gonna expand. And if it expands and it's in the right place, it's gonna kill the animal. And so for that, you see that even out to 410, 460, those cartridges are going to be just fine. But if you were to ask me for metals in this category, the gold would go to the 6.5 PRC. The silver would go to the 270 because honestly, is there much difference between a 270 and a 6.5 PRC? I often hear the 6.5 PRC compared to the Creedmoor for obvious reasons, but really to me, the utility of the 6.5 PRC is a lot more on par for a 270 Winchester. The trajectories are very similar. The bullet weights are very sim similar. The 270 is going to do it with a little wider caliber uh, for killing, but the 6.5 PRC is gonna do it with a little bit higher BCs in general, depending on what bullet you pick, and a little bit more speed. So the 270 and 6.5 PRC, man, those things are virtual twins when it comes to ballistics and terminal performance when we're talking about a hunting application. Next category is the coolest cartridges for hunting deer. Sometimes you're in a situation where it's not gonna be terribly challenging to make the shot. Okay, first one I would say is whatever your very first gun was, dad's gun, grandpa's gun, something like that. That's just a cool way to go out and hunt. It just means something. I so regret the first rifle I ever was given was from my parents gave me a Mosin Nagant when I was a teenager. And oh, why did I get rid of that? That would be such a cool gun to go hunting with for sure. Plus you got a bayonet in case the deer starts acting up, you know, give it to them, right? All right, number two would be 8.6 Blackout. I've talked about this several times on the channel recently, and we're going to be shooting this as soon as I can get my reloading components in to actually make some ammo. So 8.6 Blackout is shooting a big old 8.6 millimeter bullet. It's shooting it slow, so you could even use subsonic ammo. This is made for very short barrels. This is a 16 inch barrel, but they do it in 10 and 12 inch barrels too. So you could have this tiny little kill stick that would be really cool for hunting with. Also, a lot of people like that, you know, it doubles as your tactical gun as well. 8.6 Blackout would be a cool choice. The next choice on my cool list, just cool ways to go hunt deer this fall, would be use your carry gun. This is the MX-19 from Matrix Arms. I'm gonna be showing this in my next video. 
Oh man, this gun is really sweet. It's brand new out and it looks awesome. But a pistol hunt is always something that I have wanted to do. You gotta have the right hunt for it where you know you're gonna have a very short shot so you can be sure you're making an ethical, perfect shot every time. But I would love to go on a deer hunt in a stand with nothing but my carry gun. That'd be pretty cool. Also be sure to check out the regulations in your state to make sure it'd be legal to hunt with a pistol. Then a 4570 would be such a cool gun for hunting deer. A lever action, old school, you know, a Henry or a Marlin. I don't know who makes the best one, by the way, because I really want one. Do I want the Henry 4570 lever action or the Marlin? I cannot decide. I need to look into that more because both of them look pretty cool, but there'd be awesome ways to go hunt deer. I'd also really like to hunt deer with an air rifle. Again, got to check regulations in your state, but some of the air rifles are getting crazy. You can hunt huge animals with them now, and they have, you know, big old 50 caliber slugs that they're shooting out of them. That'd be cool. A crossbow would be cool. But the one that I've been dreaming of forever, I don't know why, but I just think it'd be so cool. I think I'm going to do it with my daughter for her first hunt. So what I want to do is... Uh, uh, make my own bullets. You know how you're actually pouring the lead to make your own bullets. And then when she loses her, when she loses a tooth, get the tooth and put it in there as the ballistic tip with her own tooth and shoot that on her very first deer hunt. I don't know why, but I just think that would be so cool to do for my daughter's first hunt. So that's one that I think that would be a very, very cool way to hunt a deer. All right, those are the cool ones, but let's get into it. Now we're to the tree stand or ground blind and wondering what you should do there. This is, you know, if you're a hunter in Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Kansas, Ohio, all of that uh, area where you're very, very unlikely to be taking long shots, what do you use for deer hunting there? I get that question all the time and I don't talk about it much because honestly, does it matter at that point? I mean, you're gonna be making a shot that a lot of bows could make, a lot of archery equipment, you know, it's probably under a hundred yards. And so often it just doesn't matter a whole lot. They're all going to do the job just fine. You know, do we really care about how much the wind drift is at 75 yards? Not really, it doesn't matter that much. And so I would pick something that you shoot well and that is cheap to shoot so you can make sure you practice and make, make sure you're going to absolutely going to make that shot. Make sure the caliber and cartridge has enough horsepower to get the job done. I don't know about 22, 250. A lot of people have hunted with it perfectly successful, no problem. I guess I always just kind of feel like, but why? What's the purpose in hunting with something that tiny? Because you're gonna be able to spot the impact with a six Creedmoor, a 243, with a lot more energy to kill that animal more quickly and effectively. And so I, why? I don't understand why we have to try to find the tiniest caliber that could possibly kill that animal. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. But as long as you're picking something with enough power that you believe in and you can make a good shot, you're set. And so, you know, your 308, your 3030 is gonna work great. Your 6.5 Creedmoor, all of it is really going to work just fine. Choose something that you shoot well. Okay, overall now, in all categories, if I had to give a gold, silver, and a bronze medal for just overall deer hunting cartridges, I would give the gold medal to the 6.5 PRC. That would be my number one pick overall. It's easier to load down a 6.5 PRC than it is up a Creedmoor, right? So if you say 6.5 PRC, I mean, it's fast, it's flat, it's awesome, but let's say you wanted a little bit less recoil for your kid hunting with it or something, whatever, you could load it down 200 feet per second, no problem. But you can't really load a Creedmoor 200 feet per second over, obviously we're gonna get pressure, right? And so I like the versatility of that range with the 6.5 PRC. Also like how forgiving it is. If you're not perfect on your wind call or your drop not, not exact, it's shooting flat and, and less wind drift enough that it's not gonna matter that much. So I really like it for that. Has plenty of horsepower to knock down any deer. 6.5 PRC would be my gold medalist for deer hunting. My silver medalist for deer hunting is probably the 308. 
it's not the fastest thing, but it's a big caliber. It's really gonna knock down a deer, even though it's not going that fast. And it's very cheap to shoot. Ammo price matters a lot to me right now. And so I like the 308 because it's inexpensive, easy to find rifles chambered in it. It's a great cartridge. My bronze choice for deer would probably be that 6.5 Creedmoor. It's so light recoil. It's fun to be able to really watch what's happening in your scope. You're not getting knocked off target. It's inexpensive, plenty powerful enough to kill a deer and it's ubiquitous. Love it or hate it, it's everywhere. What are your picks for the gold, silver, and bronze for deer hunting in general? Love to read it in the comments.